Last week in Vegas, Wisconsin was tested to the very end. Quarterback Tyler Donovan's 29-yard touchdown scamper sealed the victory with less than two minutes to play. This week, the Badgers defense faces their third spread offense as the Citadel Bulldogs at 2-0 come to town. Brett Bielema says his team must get better if their ultimate goals can be accomplished. It is a sun splash September Saturday in Madison, Wisconsin. The Citadel comes to Camp Randall Stadium to take on the seventh ranked Wisconsin Badgers. And while the temperatures might be in the mid 50s, they've been warming up since early this morning here at Camp Randall Stadium. The Badgers, one of two Big Ten teams ranked in the top 10 in the country going into play on this Saturday. The Badgers at 2 0, ranked number seven. Ohio State at number 10 will play later today at Washington. And I again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome once again to the Big Ten Network. We start with the Wisconsin Badgers. They've won 11 in a row. That is a nation's longest winning streak. And on offense, Charles, plenty of reasons to be excited. Brett Bielema loves time of possession, and he has the back who can handle that for him. P.J. Hill, last year's National Freshman of the Year, ran for around 1,500 yards, and there's been no let up in 2007. 147 yards last week against UNLV. He was on the phone late in the game demanding more carries. And their quarterback is Tyler Donovan. And when you talk with his teammates, they give him the ultimate accolades. They say he's a playmaker and he's a gamer, the kind of guy that they grasp and they rally around and they love his style of play. As far as the Wisconsin defense is concerned, Coach Bielema told us yesterday before the year began, he thought that was the number one strength of this team. But after seeing two spread offenses, he's hoping that today seeing a third, they can prove that they are the strength of this team. And they will have a little bit more of a struggle today because they have a dual run pass quarterback that they have to defend. A guy by the name of Duran Lawson, the leader of the Citadel spread option attack. He's a terrific player. He can beat you with his arm and his legs. But the biggest thing for him today is to make sure that he takes care of the football. So far this year, zero interceptions. And for the Citadel to have a chance to upset Wisconsin today, they need to win time of possession and make sure they never turn the ball over. Well, the students still rolling into Camp Randall Stadium, one of college football's great venues. And of course, they're mighty tough to beat here under Coach Barry Alvarez, who will be hopefully joining us in the booth a little bit later on. And of course, under Brett Bielema, they've only lost one time since he became head coach. This team is on a serious roll, 11 straight victories, and have won, what, 23 out of their last 24 games? It's a, it's a strong football team. Bucky ready to go here as well, and they're counting down the seconds. And waiting for their beloved Badgers to take the field. Wisconsin opened the season with a victory here against Washington State, then went on the road at a tough test last week at UNLV. It's almost one of those trap games because you go on the road, you go to Nevada, Las Vegas, the record's not that good. And then you turn around and you've got a team that's much improved, and you're in Las Vegas. So you're trying to keep the distractions down, trying to keep the guys motivated because they didn't play until late at night. A lot of different distractions, but the biggest thing is Brett Bielema says if you leave Las Vegas a winner, that's always good. Well, you see the student body, uh, understandably so, after a Friday night here in Madison, a little late rolling in. <laughs> and don't forget, they warm up on Thursday nights now, as I understand <laughs> colleges. Thursday night becomes the big night. Friday night is the capper. Well, their captains leading the way. Just think of the atmosphere here at Camp Randall, Tom, and what it was like before Barry Alvarez got to town and turned this place into what it is now. It really is an amazing story. I mean, one of the most amazing stories in sports, collegiately, professionally, what Barry Alvarez did here to turn this entire program around is staggering. 89 straight sellouts, 79 straight games with crowds over 70,000 people. Unbelievable. Now Coach Bielema bringing his team down the tunnel. 
The captains are waiting on the rest of their teammates. And here come the Wisconsin Badgers into Camp Randall Stadium. Just about set for football on the Big Ten Network. The Wisconsin Badgers and the Citadel Bulldogs in just a moment. The running back is number 23, Corey Cooper. Five. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee. By Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Spectacular setting here in Madison, Wisconsin, Camp Randall Stadium. Expecting a crowd, a sellout crowd of 83,000. Students still rolling in. Kevin Higgins in his third season at the Citadel led them to a winning conference record last year. And Brett Bielema, of course, hand chosen by Barry Alvarez, 37 years old from Prophetstown, Illinois. The third youngest coach in Division 1A college football. Ironically enough, the second youngest in the Big Ten. The Badgers won the toss and deferred, so Citadel will get the football. Tyler Melhoff set to kick it off. Torrey Cooper, 23. Cody Wilson, 33. Waiting for the Bulldogs, and we are underway at Camp Randall Stadium. Taking all the way back to the seven yard line and bringing it up to the 20 is Cody Wilson. And that's where the Citadel will put it in play. Senior quarterback from Conway, South Carolina. Duran Lawson, a second team all Southern Conference selection last year, threw for over 2,100 yards, ran for nearly 300, and had the third most yards in total offense in a conference, off to an outstanding start this year. Five touchdowns has not thrown an interception. Third straight week, the Wisconsin Badgers defense will face a quote unquote spread offense. And this is Torrey Cooper, their leading ground gainer. Breaks it to the outside, is thrown to the ground by Jack Dyke Guadu. But a first down run is good enough for five. We take a look at the rest of the Citadel on offense. Cooper has already run for better than 225 yards this season. Andre Roberts, 12 receptions. Keep an eye on him. Up front, the man in the middle. A preseason first team all Southern Conference selection is Chris McDowell. We have an injured player down for the Badgers, and that is their first team all big turn performer. Jack Ike Guanu, a junior from right here in Madison. That's not good news for Badger fans. He helps provide them with maybe the best corner tandem in the Big Ten, along with Alan Langford. And here he is making the tackle on the first play of the game against Torrey Cooper. Got him, he's pulling him down. Right there, the leg on the back side. See how it gets rolled up? His right leg gets rolled up underneath when number 11, DeAndre Levy, came by to help with the tackle. So we can only hope that he's going to go off and be able to walk and run it off and get back into the game. Oh, well, that's a great sign. When that's you see terrific. something like that, you get so concerned. And thankfully, he's trotting off the field, yes, with a limp. But hopefully, that's just some pain that needs to get they rattled out of there. So now probably that means Ben Strickland, number three, should come into the ball game. He's the backup at that position. But it looks like they're going with number seven, Aaron Henry, the true freshman, who's become the third cornerback for the Wisconsin Badgers. So now they spread it out offensively a little bit. And Lawson a throw for the first time, and the catch is made out to the 32-yard line by Scott Flanagan. And that'll be good enough for a first down. The catch made by Ty Taylor Cornett. The tight end up front for the Badgers. Certainly keep an eye on Shaughnessy, a third-year starter, a very talented and speedy linebacking core. Jonathan Casillas, a preseason All-American. We've already seen Ike Guano leave the field. Henry in for him. Langford, the other corner, Carter and Pleasant, first-year starters at safety. 
broken play there. And Lawson just sticks it in his pocket and gets back to the line of scrimmage. One of the smarter plays a quarterback can make when everyone goes in the opposite direction that he goes. You just try and get as much as you can at that spot. Ordinarily, what they tell a running back is if the play is blown, you try and go to where the hole is supposed to be, where the play was designed. Just get as much as you can, but take care of the football. That's number two, Jonathan Casillas coming, coming straight ahead on pursuit. Ends up getting the first hit along with number 54, Mike Newkirk. Second down and 10, and Lawson on the quarterback keeper cuts it back to the inside. And he carries out to the 37-yard line. That'll be a pickup of five. It'll bring up third and five. A pleasure to be joined again this week, the third member of our broadcast team. Carissa Thompson along the sidelines. Hi, Carissa. Hi, guys. Well, here's the deal. Everyone is told to wear red. Coach Bielema said there's something overwhelming about everyone wearing one color. So leave the white and gray at home. One color, one goal, and that's extending that winning streak to 12. All right, Carissa. Crowd getting into a third down and five for the Citadel on their opening drive. Higgins in motion. Lawson has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Kirk DeKramer, they like him very much. A redshirt freshman just down the road from Middleton, Wisconsin. Normally you get you hear the term coverage sack when a quarterback's had a long time to throw the football and, it's, and the coverage is there. This time it was a coverage sack on a three-step drop because the linebackers were underneath the routes that Duran Lawson wanted to throw. That allowed the Kramer to get to him for the sack. Mark Kaspar to punt it away. The electrifying freshman David Gilreath standing back and will field it at the 25. And he cuts it back up through the middle. And Gilreath is tripped up. Inside Citadel territory, they'll mark it at the 44-yard line. And the punter, the man who tripped him up, a true freshman out of New Hope, Minnesota, David Gilry. Right there, the first, watch the gap right there that he's able to get up through. And the best part about him is what you hear, a north-south runner. The hole was there. He got right up into it and got where he needed to be without dancing a lot. Tom, don't be surprised if they take a shot right now downfield to go for it big. Tyler Donovan making his fifth start. He's 4-0 when he replaced John Stocko, who was injured last year, led the Badgers to a big win over Iowa. And he has a perfect record as a starter, four wins without a loss. And he's back to throw on first down and fires to the far sideline. And that's another true freshman who's getting a big chance here today, Kyle Jefferson. He's out of Cleveland, Ohio, legendary Glenville High School. Of course, his coach, Ted Ginn Sr., the father of Ohio State, former star Ted Ginn Jr. And like what Paul Chris did here on the opening play, he has to get Kyle Jefferson going because Paul Hubbard, the normal starter, is out for six to eight weeks. Jefferson's a freshman. You already extolled his virtues. This is a guy that they need to play big, his first catch as a Badger. He is a long, cool drink of water, going at 6'5", 195 pounds. And Donovan again to throw, again looking to Jefferson. And did he catch it? He got a hand on it and then held on. When we talked with Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, he said, we've got to get this guy involved early. First two plays of the game, they go to Kyle Jefferson, the freshman, and nothing will help your confidence more than making a circus catch early in the ball game. Kyle Jefferson definitely into the game now. They're going to call that about a foot away from being a first down. Just so, think the big guy hasn't even touched it yet, yep, Tom. 27-yard punt return, then back-to-back -back throws to the true freshman, the first two receptions in the career of Kyle Jefferson. And they're going to throw it again. The slant to Beckham and nearly intercepted red beautifully by Tillman Milhouse. We talked about P.J. Hill coming off a game which he rushed for 147 yards against UNLV. And we've already seen a couple of catches out of Kyle Jefferson, but Beckham, the main man at tight end. Up front, Karimi replacing Joe Thomas there, Mr. Everything along at left tackle. And they've really liked his style of play early in his career here at Wisconsin, taking firm hold of the left tackle position. They work it out of the eye formation. The first carry for P.J. Hill. He goes to the end zone. Touchdown, Badger. Well, after the big punt. 
Good return, pass, pass, right pass, pass, pass right and give it here. to him. You gotta look at Marcus Coleman, the center, 65, Craig Irvick, number 63, the guard, and Eric Vandenhoevel, the right tackle. Just came right through, and he's led by number 44, Chris Presley, with an excellent lead block on number two, Kendrick Lyles. And after that, it was easy for P.J. Hill. Now the point after is right down the middle. So the Badgers get the big punt return. They put it up in the air to start the game and a first hand off to P.J. Hill, 20 yards and a touchdown. And the seventh ranked Badgers off and running at Camp Randall. P.J. Hill, the touchdown run, 7-0 Wisconsin. Let's take a look, Charles Davis in our Suzuki Motorcycles keys to the game. Well, for the Citadel, as QB or not QB, Duran Lawson has to be dynamic while still taking care of the football and being a game manager. Must make big plays. And for Wisconsin, punch the clock. Brett Bielema loves time of possession. Last year, seven minutes to the advantage of Wisconsin. So far this year, nearly nine minutes to their advantage. He loves controlling the clock. Isn't it funny how some coaches make Make a big deal out of that and others it's all style less. style of offense yeah. you know he likes to pound it coaches who throw it around a lot they don't care about time of possession Corey Cooper from the six yard line out across the 20 to the 25 and he's tripped up at the 29 our Holiday Inn Express Wisconsin scoring drive not much time of possession right there a minute 20 to go 42 yards after the big punt return and Hill caps it off with a touchdown mission accomplished though the big punt return last year they averaged only nearly seven yards per return that one was 27 also they got Kyle Jefferson going as a wide receiver early first two plays hit him with passes a terrific first drive for what Wisconsin wanted to get done. Cooper in motion and rolling out to the left is Lawson looking around and fires across the middle. And that's his favorite target, Andre Roberts. A nice pickup out to the 45 yard line. Roberts last week had three catches in the first half against Weber International, and all of them were touchdown receptions 47, 24, and 15 yards. He is their big play guy. He's just a sophomore, but they call him their go to. And Duran Lawson was able to come off of his first target, who was covered, and come back to Roberts as a second option and complete the pass. Roberts his 13th catch of this young season and he didn't get a lot of playing time in the second half of that game last week And here comes a double reverse Taking the football Jamar Jernigan he avoids one tackle still on his feet all the way down to the 31 yard line Jernigan the senior out of Lake City, Florida A big carry and a big gainer there of 25 would they tell you as a backside end or linebacker who's responsible for backside leverage, they tell you to be a BCR player, which stands for boot, cut back, or reverse. On that play, Wisconsin got out flank, didn't have the BCR guy backside, the reverse able to work as, as, as the Citadel got three blockers out in front. The Southpaw Lawson again out of the shotgun and again to throw it, and it is caught. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line, and again, it is Jernigan, this time on a reception. Well, for those of you dialed into the Big Ten Network, today's games, a couple already underway in the channels on DirecTV, and we welcome our friends now from the Dish Network jumping on board with the Big Ten. So Akron at Indiana on 219, Buffalo at Penn State 218. 440 on the dish, 441 for Akron and Indiana. Hand off to Cooper and just nowhere to go. The first man there, DeAndre Levy. From Milwaukee in his second year as a starter. He had a team high six sacks a year ago. I think what the Citadel is going to find is that running the ball inside of against Wisconsin will be very difficult, but they'll have to do it from time to time just to keep them honest because they don't want the linebackers running out of there to go cover the pass route so easily. They've got to make them check it. The third down play, third and three. And this time under center is Lawson. Short drop, throwing for the end zone and overthrows his intended target, Andre Roberts, who is looking for a flag. Isolated out there. 
and he got one. That was Aaron Henry, who of course, is still in the game, replacing the injured Jack Ikeguanu. He came, Ikeguanu came back for a play. The first completed pass of this drive and then left the game again. May still be feeling soreness. I think they got Henry for a hold on this play, Tom. Look to the right side of your screen as Lawson lofts the ball downfield. Before we could see it on the, on the camera, number seven, Henry, was called for grabbing the receiver as he tried to get downfield. Well, an automatic first down, and the ball is at the 13-yard line. Citadel on the move, trailing 7-0. Play fake to Cooper. Good protection. Catch made by Roberts. He took a lick from Levy, but held on to the football. A gain of four. That's a huge play for so many reasons, of course, for the completion. But how about the message Andre Roberts sends to his teammates that he's fearless going across the middle, and even when confronted with a big hit from DeAndre Levy, holds on to the ball. They spotted a gain of six, so second down and four for the Bulldogs. Lawson looking around, avoids one tackler and has plenty of daylight. And he will step out of bounds close to the first down marker. In fact, he got there down to the three-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs. Another time where the end loses contained. Watch Matt Shaughnessy, number 92. He's got a chance to get him, but he comes too far upfield inside, and Duran Lawson's able to step outside and create a play at the corner. The tough part with a mobile quarterback, Tom, is being able to keep him contained and still keep your aggressiveness going after him. A lot of times you throttle back so much, he has more time to throw the ball. Lou Holtz, legendary head football coach, said the spread offense is the biggest equalizer he has ever seen in college football. And it is creating many, many problems for some big time teams. The pitch. And then losing his footing is Corey Cooper. That's a big loss all the way back to the nine-yard line. It's a lead option. Watch DeAndre Levy, number 11. He's underneath it and forces it because Taylor Cornett, number 84, that would be the guy he ordinarily would block on the lead. He would be the lead blocker. But Levy was upfield so fast that he got underneath Cornett's block and was never able to get there. And now they spread him out. Second down and goal from the Wisconsin 10. Good protection. Caught over the middle and into the end zone is Tim Higgins, and that is the coach's son. He played for three years at the University of Florida, got into one game, and then started graduate school to play one final year for his father. It's a terrific story, but the payoff is that he's a good football player. He came in and earned his way and became a starter and just ran an underneath the route after he'd been cleared out. And Papa's happy because his team scored and his son scored. And the point after is good by Mike Adams. So here we go again, Mr. Davis. We saw it in Michigan. We saw a fast start by Akron in Columbus, and now a good start for the Bulldogs. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Due to time constraints, we will move ahead in the action after the commercial break. Well, apparently there is a reason why the play clock ran down, forcing the Bulldogs to spend a timeout. The play card, which is taped on the wrist of Duran Lawson, came off. And when he got the signal from the sideline about what play to run, he looked down and realized he didn't have it and called timeout. They throw it to the far side, and the catch is made by Tamar Jernigan. That's his third catch today, and that's a gain of five on first down. Tom, last year when we did the Florida-Ohio State game, we talked about going into the game that Florida would come at you from many different angles. It's the same thing that the Citadel is doing here. This time they run a receiver in motion across formation, and he became the lead blocker on the play, throwing it out to the sideline. We've seen a receiver crack back inside to become a lead blocker. They're getting plays inside with the running backs. A lot of different angles coming from the Bulldogs. 
Lawson on the option is going to keep it himself, and a penalty flag comes in. He's dropped for nearly a four-yard loss. We'll wait on Steve Payman, our referee, for the decision. And that'll be holding against the Bulldogs. And they were able to smother that play because the defensive line held the point of attack so well for Wisconsin. No creases. During the run, holding, offense number 71, penalties declined, third down. It's the center, Chris McDowell. But as they came down, watch the D-line of Wisconsin. See the red? No one gets turned away. Newkirk, 54, able to hold the point of attack and smother the quarterback. All well, the players along the Wisconsin sideline urging this crowd at Camp Randall to start making some noise. This is a big third down and seven. And a quarterback keeper. And read beautifully by the Badger defense. The Kramer again on the tackle. A gain of three, but the Bulldogs will punt it. That was well done, and I think you said it exactly right, Tom. Well read, because they've scouted him. When we talked with Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator yesterday, he talked about third and five, six situations that they like the quarterback draw. They like to run that play with Duran Lawson. They were well alerted to that play, and the Kramer came right down the line and made it. Well, that is the end of the opening quarter, and Coach Higgins has to feel very good about things right now. The Citadel and the Wisconsin Badgers tied at seven. We're back to Camp Randall Stadium after these messages. Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison. A 7-7 game as we're set to begin the second quarter. And a dangerous David Gilry stands back at his own 15-yard line. And lots of room fielding this one at the 15, but outstanding closing coverage by Demetrius Jackson. And he slams Gil Reith to the turf. I really thought he had a chance there, but Jackson made a terrific play and tackle an open field. Wow. How about that? Wow. 108 total yards for the Citadel to 67 for Wisconsin. Not what you would have thought the way this game began for Wisconsin on offense. Well, they're going to put it on the ground and hand it off to P.J. Hill, and he's out to the 28-yard line. A good first down pickup, and Charles, you were talking during our commercial break a moment again there that uh, you know, perhaps Wisconsin ought to get it back on the ground. We take a look ahead to next week, next Saturday at 12 Eastern, 11 Central. Charles, you'll be on your way to Bloomington, Indiana to get a look at the Hoosiers against the Fighting Illini. The Hoosiers off to a nice start under Bill Lynch. And Illinois getting it together under Ron Zook, whacking Syracuse today. Have a chance to get the two and one. They stay on the ground with Hill, and he's bottled up. A flag from the far side of the field along the sideline. Hill very close to first down yardage, but is this coming back? You hope that it's not a formation problem for Wisconsin, which is what it could have been. That's what it is. When you have a lot of young receivers, sometimes they're not sure whether they should be on the line or off the line in formation. Legal motion on the offense number one. He was moving forward at the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Now that's an older receiver doing something that just shouldn't happen. Yeah, he, he's trying to he's, get it, and, and look at it. And, and he's coming forward trying to get away because he wants to get downfield and block and really just false stepped a little bit. You're supposed to come down, settle, chop your feet until the ball snapped. He got one false step in, and the official detected it. Well, after the penalty, that makes it second down and nine for Tyler Donovan and the Wisconsin offense, and they're coming after him. Picked up this time and drops it off across the middle. The catch is made by Swan, and that's good enough for a first down in the 36. 
Tom, what, what the Citadel likes to do on defense is move a lot of guys around, and similar to offense, come at you from different angles. On this play, Luke Swan able to run a little look-in route, a little short post, he gets inside, and Tyler Donovan hits him. And the reason he was able to, the offensive line picked up the blitz and held the, held the point of attack very well so Tyler Donovan could step into his throw. Again, the blitz coming, and Donovan in trouble is able to escape it. And he's still on his feet. Across midfield, all the way down to the 43-yard line, and that certainly is a big part of the game for Tyler Donovan. He can run the football if he's flushed out of the pocket. A gain of 24. What you're getting is pressure from the Citadel and then man coverage in the secondary, which means no one's accounting for the quarterback. So when he goes into the pocket, here come the two guys upfield, and when he steps forward, now it's just a matter of beating the linebacker, Andrew Rowell, number 54. Donovan does that and gets into the secondary for a terrific pickup because the receivers have run off the defensive backs in man coverage. And now Donovan wants a timeout. Wait, did he lose his wristband? Oh, sorry, he's, he's not wearing one, is he? <laughs> no. Doesn't look like it. Not, not a play wristband anyway. 7-7 game, the Badgers on the move. We'll be back. First down for the Badgers at the Citadel 40-yard line, a 7-7 game, and this is P.J. Hill. And he has been at the line of scrimmage coming up to make the stop again. The first team all Southern Conference safety, Joshua Lawson. No game. That's a big time play, too, from Lawson. He stepped up and took on a 220, was it 223, 224? Depends on when he ate PJ Hill. Mm -hmm. That's a big power back that he stuck right in the hole and put him down at the spot of contact. First, the Citadel, founded in 1842 in Charleston, South Carolina, an enrollment of 1900, 40% of which will go into the military upon graduation. They hand it off to Beckham. And that'll be a gain of five. It'll be third down and five. Little, but of course, the Citadel, one of the great yeah. academic institutions in the United States of America. And, and, it's, and it's a place where you really have to be dedicated to go. It's just a little fly sweep. Right here, Beckham, the tight end, just comes in motion, and they hand it to him like he's a running back, getting some guys leading. Don't be surprised to see that play go more to like a David Gilreath, number 85 in the future, one of those scat backs who can really break it. Third down and rolling is Donovan. Beckham left all alone. He has a first down and more to the 20-yard line. With Beckham, the second team All-American a season ago when he made 61 receptions, has already gone by a thousand yards career receiving. He is a monster at that position. Just a terrific receiver, and watch the block he gets downfield for number one, Luke Swan. Another great block. Swan had the big block that sprang Don Tyler Donovan for the winning touchdown at UNLV. He got another one in on that play, helping Travis Beckham downfield. Swan, the man in motion out of the eye formation, and P.J. Hill off the right side, still on his feet, spins his way down to the 15-yard line. That'll be a gain of nearly six for P.J. Hill. Isaac Collins, the defensive coordinator for the Citadel, told us that he would be, pick his spots when the, uh, in order to blitz, but it seems like almost every play is picking his spot because they're crowding the line of scrimmage with as many guys as possible, hoping to confuse the blocking schemes of Wisconsin. The downside, if you pop it or pass the initial line of scrimmage, there's plenty of room to run in the second and third levels. Zach Brown, the true freshman running back out of Royal Palm, Florida, has come in to give P.J. Hill a breather. And he will get the football immediately. And is denied first down yardage. That'll be a gain of maybe two. It'll bring up third down for the Badgers at the Citadel 13-yard line. I see Chris Presley, the lead blocker, is coming back into the ball game, replacing Travis Beckham, the tight, the tight end. From a 
momentum standpoint, this becomes a critical third down. If the Citadel can get a stop, they'll feel very good about this defensive stand. On third down, they hand it off, and they get a stop. So now the question becomes for Brett Bielema, do you even consider going for it on fourth down and maybe a yard and a half? He made the decision on third down that it was a two-down play, two-down series, because they ran the ball on third down. If he was thinking that might kick a field goal here, I think he would have kept the ball in the hands of Tyler Donovan. Instead, he ran it with Brown. Now he's coming back with the big horse, P.J. Hill, out on the field because he had it in his mind, I'm going to go for it here. I think he's going to try and line up and run the sledgehammer at him. Although, the Although now they got Presley out. out, yes. Bill the lone setback, three receivers set. That's Gilreath. They're going to hand it to him. You just made that call, Charles Davis, a moment ago. And Gilreath inside the five. The football isn't loose. Apparently, Gilreath was down at the four. You just made that call a moment ago. They very much like this exciting true freshman out of Minnesota. And you like what Paul Christ has done because he showed it with Travis Beckham, number nine, early. And then he came back with the freshman who can really make plays. And on that play, Travis Beckham, number nine, right there. Look at the block he makes on the corner. Now, Gilbert, as he goes down, Milhouse, Tillman Milhouse, number three, knocked it free. But the ball stays with the Badgers. Well, I got a feeling they're going to review this. And clearly, the ground caused the fumble. That was not a fumble before he hit the ground. Substitution infraction. The defense had 12 men on the field for more than three seconds. Half the distance to the goal remains first down. Well, Tom, we're in the part of a part of the country where people will remember this, and I know you're not supposed to mention Minnesota when you're here at Washington, but let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Did I miss it? There he is. Twelve. Rudimentary math. University of Tennessee stat. I was going to say. <laughs> Tennessee, it took oh, you a while oh, to hey, get there. Oh, it took me a while to get 12. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I got stuck at 11. P.J. Hill carries with the tacklers into the end zone, and Hill has his second touchdown today. Push up front, and the big guy finds a little crease and empowers his way in through a couple of tacklers for the second touchdown of the game for P.J. Hill. The point after is good by Melhoff. So Wisconsin, which jumped out to a 7-0 lead, only to have Citadel go down the field to tie it, takes their opening possession of the second quarter. And march into the end zone on the broad shoulders of sophomore P.J. Hill. Corey Cooper from his own five-yard line out across the 20. And still on his feet to the 28-yard line. A nice return. For the senior out of Effingham, South Carolina. Well, it's a show all Big Ten fans do not want to miss. Highlights, analysis, interviews, and much, much more. The Big Ten tonight, every night, right here on the Big Ten Network, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. How about our man Dave Revson? He works hard for the money, doesn't he? Better believe it. And he does a great job. And then he's got Jerry DiNardo and Howard Griffith in the studio breaking down all the football for you. These guys are making all that big dough in the hey, Windy City. They're earning it. They're earning it. Doing a great job. I love listening to those guys give us a little football talk. Out of the shotgun. They're coming back the other way. And this is Roberts. He got a good block to keep him from having a loss of five. And then a late flag comes in. That's going to benefit the Citadel. That's going to be a late hit on Wisconsin. That might be against Casillas or DeKramer, one or the other. Casillas came flying in there. After the runner was down, dead ball, personal foul for a late hit, defense number two. That's a 15-yard penalty, and it carries an automatic first down. After a great job nullifying one of those Phantom Raider plays, 
that teams like to run. Plays over, Casillas at the end. And that's going to cost him 15 big ones. What a great block there by Brian Fletcher, the right guard. He took out two Badgers with one blow. He, and, and what he did was he, he let him oh, get back to the line of scrimmage, essentially. If he doesn't make that block, that's a big loss. Well, now Duran Lawson, the senior quarterback, out of the shotgun, rolls one way, comes back the other way, looking down the field, and is able to just basically throw it away. Chased by Kurt Ware, the senior out of Spring, Texas. A couple of other games taking place on the Big Ten Network today. For those of you on DirecTV, Buffalo and Penn State on Channel 218 on the Dish Network at 440. Akron at Indiana. DirecTV, Channel 219 on the Dish Network, Channel 441. A nice play on that last snap time by Aubrey Pleasant getting underneath the route that Duran Lawson wanted to throw. Corey Cooper with a big hole springs it up the middle and he is chopped down but not before a big gainer of nearly 20. Carries all the way down to the Wisconsin 31 yard line. They are, find, they are finding ways to get up underneath. Now watch here, as, as, as the Wisconsin line slants, came and found it, and there was the big block, number 79 on that play, Daniel DeHaven. With the full block coming inside, hits DeAndre Levy, number 11, that allows Cooper to hurdle into the third level and into the secondary. So now the Citadel, again after falling behind on the move, first down, Lawson, the little screen. And able to maybe pick up two is Tory Cooper and was tripped up by Jason Chapman, the junior out of Bedford Heights, Ohio. I thought early in the ball game that sit the Citadel would have a real difficult time running the ball inside against Wisconsin's front. That has not proven to be true. They found creases and gaps and have had some big runs inside, which allows everything for them that they want to do on the perimeter to be that much more available to them. It's a beautiful job of preparation here by Kevin Higgins and his entire staff. Yeah, Dave, I mean, they're hanging right in there. Yeah, Dave Cicchini, his offensive coordinator, has been with him in two, uh, two stops. Lawson and got a big block as a catch is made by Cooper out of the backfield. And again, a critical block made by Tamar Jernigan to spring him loose for a big yardage. He's all the way down to the 19-yard line. He also got a nice block here to the left as the play begins from number 11, Joshua Haney. Two receivers, block there, block there. Beautiful job. And then becomes one-on-one, -on -one and Cooper gains nice yardage, almost runs through the tackle of number seven, Aaron Henry. And again, Aaron Henry is in there for the injured Jack Ikeguanu. For those of you not with us, Injured in the opening minutes of this game, came back for one series and has not returned again. A five receiver set this time and a quarterback draw, and Lawson is inside the 15, down to the 13, tackled by Shane Carter. Shane Carter. Coming up on the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. The Remsen and company from Chicago will bounce around the Big Ten, have highlights and stats, and look ahead to games coming up later. A big one for the Ohio State Buckeyes later this afternoon in Seattle. Remember at the beginning of the season, everyone was lamenting about Ohio State's schedule, how they weren't going to play anyone. All of a sudden, they're playing someone. The Washington Huskies are undefeated. Yeah, they've only played Texas the last two years, and USC <laughs> the next two. And a timeout called. Again, the play clock nearly running out on the Citadel Bulldogs. But Lawson and company on the move again, making a bid to again tie the game. Here we go. They go Badgers. Go Badgers. There's a good-looking young Badger Yay! fan, but I'm sure his mom and daddy are a little bit concerned right now. Someone's mom and dad are concerned about their money and how it's being spent I was going to say, that guy doesn't seem concerned about <laughs> much bit First down for the second down, I beg your pardon, for the Citadel on the move at the Badger 13-yard line. And Duran Lawson again on the quarterback keeper. 
Dives ahead inside the 10 and might have enough for a first down. He needed to get to the nine, depending on the spot. Now, the last three times they've emptied out the backfield, put the, put, put the back in motion, it's become a quarterback run play. The last three times. Now, that means Kevin Higgins and Dave Cicchini as offense coordinator, they have a counter in their bag of tricks. At some point, they're going to see Wisconsin see that empty, dive towards the middle, and have some type of a counter play for them. Inside the 10, it's first and goal for the Citadel Bulldogs out of the Southern Conference. They line up in the I formation and hand it off to Cooper. And he is met at the line of scrimmage by the middle linebacker Elijah Hodge. Of course, his brother Abdul, a star at Iowa. And Elijah in his first year as a starter here in Wisconsin. Trying to follow in his brother's footsteps. He has all the ability in the world to do that. He's coming off the field now. And Colmer St. Jean, number 15, is coming into the ball game at middle linebacker. What's interesting with the Citadel, different from Appalachian State, when they get inside the 10-yard line, they go to more of a standard offensive set and put their quarterback under center. Three receivers on the far side of the field, and they're going to hand it off to Cooper. And he is sandwiched down to the six-yard line by St. Jean and Jonathan Casillas, a gain of two. And now it is third down and goal for the Citadel Bulldogs. What do you look for here, Mr. Davis? The ball has to be in the hands of the quarterback, Duran Moss, and giving him an opportunity to run or throw. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes the ball and approaches an end either side to give him that option. Down and goal. Roberts in motion. They're going to let Lawson roll one way. Looks back the other. Left wide open and into the end zone. Touchdown, Aaron Kelly. That is Kelly's first catch of the year. And clearly the play call and the play movement one way fooled the Badger defense. And now a point after upcoming for Mike Adams to try and tie the game. Terrific flow. And what happens is he comes back against the grain because all flow goes this way. And all he did was pretend to block, stutter step at the line of scrimmage, let everything wash out and come back opposite. And he's wide open. The point after is good. So here we are again where a team out of the Southern Conference has marched in on the home turf of one of the Big Ten's powers. We know what Appalachian State did against Michigan and Citadel trying to do the same thing in Madison. And they're getting it done by design. Look at the head coach, Kevin Higgins. He can feel that play, and then he sees the conclusion. Now, that number one that he's pointing up is not we're number one. It's we're going to kick an extra point, not go for two. And on the opposite side, that's an old defensive coach. He's a head coach now, but his heart's still with the defense. And boy, he sure doesn't like to see that. But what a well-designed offense that Kevin Higgins and Dave Cicchini have put together. Flow one way, tight end Kelly comes back opposite. We now have a tied ball game. And how Citadel is doing it, Tom, we talked about the angles they're coming from, the different looks that they're giving them, but they're also taking care of the football and possessing it for long drives. That's exactly what they want, to keep their defense off the field so they don't get mauled by the big guys from Wisconsin and take care of the ball because now you got a tie game and you keep doing what? Reducing time off the clock. That's what they want. Well, that time of his possession, we heard uh, Brett Bielema talk about that at length yesterday. That's a big one for him, that statistic. And right now, nearly four minutes longer in favor of the Citadel. Another kick out of bounds by the Citadel. What is that, the fourth one, I believe, this year that they kicked out of bounds on kickoffs? That is the fourth one. Free kick out of bounds from the kicking team. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Re-kick. We take a look at the scoring drive, and an impressive one it was for the Citadel. Ten plays, 70 yard, 72 yards, chewing up nearly five minutes. So that's a ten-play drive. And wasn't that what Dave Cicchini, the offense coordinator, tells us? We've got to take care of the ball, and we want long drives. We want to possess them. We want the, the chains to move and make sure we hold on to the football. Ten plays accomplishes that. 
A much better kick this time. In fact, a real good kick this time. Sending Gilreath all the way back to the seven. He's out across the 30, still on his feet. And run out of bounds at the 39-yard line. A late flag comes in. And this might tack on 15 more. See, the kickoff team, after you kick it out of bounds and have to run down again, they're already angry because it's the second time they've got to have a full-speed sprint. Sometimes you don't keep your mind right and you do things you're not supposed to on the second one. After the runner was out of bounds, dead ball, personal foul, 36 on the kicking team. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. So the kicker kicks the ball out of bounds to set him up for a penalty, then compounds it with at the end of the play where he's trying to make up for it, he hits the runner late. So not a good sequence for the kicker from the Citadel, Mike Adams. I want to see if Wisconsin wants to come out and pound the ball a little bit with P.J. Hill here, or with four minutes to go in the half, do they want to move it by air also? Well, Wisconsin has been very, very good in the final few minutes of a half. As there's a pass that is ruled out of bounds, they're saying he did not make the catch, that Beckham did not get the foot down. The second down and 10 upcoming. Wisconsin puts a real emphasis on trying to score before the end of the half. With 11 of their last 15 games, they've scored points in the last two minutes of the half. Because they talk about starting fast and finishing fast. Let's see if Beckham gets the foot down. Ball thrown. First foot. Nope, he's right on the white. Nice call by nice call by the official on the sideline. And now they're going to go back to the ground and P.J. Hill. He's down to the 41 yard line. So third down and five, almost six upcoming for the Badgers. The clock winding down, 340 to play until halftime. And we're tied in Madison at 14. Good thing Wisconsin has, they have a terrific kicker, Taylor Melhoff. Kicked a 51 yard against Wisconsin against UNLV last week. But right now where they are, that might even be a little bit out of his range. And hand it off on third down, and P.J. Hill has first down yardage and Smith in the end zone. Hill along the sideline. And he's run out of bounds before getting there. They spot it just outside the one. A 40-yard run for P.J. Hill. Double tight ends. This is like the old counter tray the Redskins used to run, but now it's out of a different formation. Watch the two tight ends coming back this side. Block there, block there, and they got them both. Great job because number 89, Garrett Graham, and number 36, Mickey Turner, helping open the hole for P.J. Hill. And if I'm Wisconsin and Paul Christ, I give him another dose of number 39 right back at him. Well, he's still in the game out of the eye formation. That's Turner in motion. They give it to Hill, and he gets into the end zone for the third time today. Only one minute runs off the clock. Four plays, 46 yards, and a touchdown. Nice job with the push. Chris Presley, number 44, the lead guy, takes him, takes care of the first Citadel defender to show. Nice push up front by the offensive line. And P.J. Hill struts into the end zone for the third time today. Point after is good by Melhoff. So P.J. Hill here in the opening half, 12 carries, 96 yards. And three touchdowns coming off a game at Vegas where he carried it 30 times for 147 yards. You know what I'm seeing in this game so far? Contrast of offensive coordinators. Dave Cicchini and Kevin Higgins of the, of the Citadel, we talk about the angles they like to show. Come from you different guys, move in different spots, and, and, and you know, you're just like, okay, where, where could I find this guy? With Wisconsin, they accomplish many of the same things by formations. Have we noticed all the different formations Paul Christ is showing, trying to outflank them and gain leverage on every play that they're, they're running. So two different ways of achieving the same goal. 
Well, clearly, Wisconsin getting back to their staple. That's running the football. They did threw on first down. It was ruled incomplete when Beckham was out of bounds. Four plays in a row running the football. What did Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, say to us? You asked him a great question yesterday about, you know, how does all this happen to you? How do you recruit, compete, and all that? And he said, you have an identity, and you know who you are. And we saw who Wisconsin was on this last drive with the four straight running plays. Those are the Badgers. So 3-0-1 to play until halftime. Melhoff with a kick that will be fielded at the five-yard line by Cooper, and he is fun to the death. And there's the captain. He's not a starter. But he's one of the Badgers' captains, Ben Strickland, the first non-starter to be elected team captain since Carl McCullough back in 1997. And with this new kickoff rule, so much more important to have guys who are so dedicated to getting downfield and making those types of plays. As we look at the scoring drive, four plays, 46 yards, P.J. Hill capping it all off. Well, it looks like uh, Citadel's not going to stick it no. in its pocket. No, this, this is who they are. High, wide, and handsome. None of this sitting on and going to the half happy to be down seven. Well, again, a quarterback draw with an empty backfield, and you talked about it a short while ago. Wisconsin going to try and bottle that right up. The counter will have to start emerging for that play because now we've seen it about five times. Same formation. Join host Mike Hall to find out what's happening on campus as your school preps for the big game. Get up to the second reports and see campuses battle it out to determine who has the best football atmosphere. Friday night tailgate, Fridays 8 Eastern, 7 Central only on the Big Ten Network. Going to hand it off to Cooper, and he has big down game. And what a tackle there by Carter. The clock will stop with 2.15 to go. The Bulldogs only have one timeout left. And Mike Hankwitz, the D coordinator, and Randall McCray, the defensive line coach, are going to have to make some adjustments at the half. Slant, and the catch is made, and another first down out to midfield. And again, that's Higgins, his second catch today. The other one went for a touchdown. Too many plays being made inside in the run game by the Citadel, which opens things up when they do decide to throw the ball. Lawson, great protection, and underthrows his receiver. That ball short hopped by Andre Roberts, and actually that's a break for the Bulldogs. Stops the clock for them. Minute and 50 to go. That throw definitely on Duran Lawson, ball he should be completing. And as you mentioned, short hopped it to his receiver. And now Lawson going to talk things over with his head coach. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up shortly. From our studios in Chicago. And they've got plenty to talk about, don't they? Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, the fellas will have a riveting halftime from the action around the Big Ten. Empty backfield. Do they make the change that you've been calling for here, Charles? There it is. Well, he faked like he was going to run, throws the football across the middle, and the catch is made all the way down to the 30-yard line by Joshua Haney. You said they do it, and that they did. They had to have a counter to it. They'd shown it so many times. They were waiting for the adjustment to be made by Wisconsin. They got it. This time he fakes the run, steps back, and completes the pass across the middle against one-on-one -on -one coverage. Gain of 21. The clock down to a minute 35, and the ball dropped by Roberts. Again, perhaps nearly a break with only one timeout remaining. That would have been a gain of about six. Let's go back to the watch Duran Lawson. Empty set, fakes the run, and then steps back. And now, again, against the one on one coverage of Ben Strickland, completes the pass to Joshua Haney, number 11. Well, I sure love what I'm seeing on offense from the Citadel today, as well as Wisconsin. It's a real chess match by the two offensive coordinators, and they're both winning their battles today. Empty backfield for Duran Lawson, the senior from Conway, South Carolina. He has time to throw. And across the middle, it's Roberts, who wisely steps out of bounds at the 20-yard line. We saw a lot of that in the national championship game from the Florida Gators. Because right now, they've got Wisconsin back on their heels. 
They're not sure what to do in terms of rushing the quarterback. Will they hit us inside with the run play? What is Durant Lawson going to do? Thus, when he does step back to throw the ball, he has enough time now to find receivers. And that was just a shallow cross route by Andre Roberts. And as you mentioned, a very smart move coming underneath and then getting out of bounds. Big play right here. Third down in the yard. A minute 29 to play until halftime. The Citadel with one timeout remaining, trailing, and that's good enough for a first down. Which means it stops the clock. Yep, 124. So people were saying, I know people sit there and say, why are we running it there? Time's running out, only one timeout. You kind of get a free timeout because the clock stops to set the chains if you get the first down. And they did. That saves that timeout in case you need it in order to run your field goal team out. Well, they're burning a lot of time right here. Lawson taking a lot of time there to get the play called from the sideline. It's almost like they didn't anticipate the clock actually starting after the chains are set, which is the rule. They've lost now almost 20 seconds by the time the ball is snapped. Good thing is field position-wise, not quite as much urgency. Across the middle, and you can take your time when you make calls like that. Torrey Cooper to the end zone. What an extraordinary drive. Eight plays, 62 yards, and a touchdown. And with a point after, we're going to be tied yet again. The second time they've scored with isolation on linebackers. Cooper getting downfield. There's Hodge, 52. See him pointing like someone else is supposed to take him? Uh-uh. No one had it. Touchdown, Citadel. So after the touchdown throw of 19 yards, it goes nine plays, 81 yards in only one minute and 58 seconds. Wisconsin prides itself on running two-minute offense as well as anyone in the country. The Citadel says, we're pretty good at that too. And this is a team that now is, you know, what, let's face it, you see the excitement on the sideline? From, from them and of course the disappointment from Wisconsin but let's face it the Citadel came in here saying we hope we can do well I think now they believe that they have an opportunity sure Abney State showed the way but now oh, hold a second we're tied we got a shot at this thing just beautiful running it again Elijah Hodge number 52 thought he had coverage back there behind him it wasn't there isolated one-on-one -on -one linebacker the running back Tends to win that battle in open field. What a drive by the quarterback, Duran Lawson. Oh, what an impressive first half he has had here in Madison. How about this, Tom? Back-to-back -back drives for the Citadel. Ten plays and nine plays. They can give up a lot of yardage here. I'm not crazy about Skip Kid. No, I'm not crazy about it either. It's going to give Wisconsin great field position. And plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. But a kicker who has plenty of leg. That's Tyler Holland fielding the ground ball and bringing it into Citadel territory. I really think most teams should take that squib kick and throw it right out of their playbook. No doubt. Because you're giving up way too much space. Remember, you're kicking from the 30 now. I mean, you're already giving up an extra five yards from what you did before. And against a team that you know in scouting reports loves to run that type of off, runs love to run offense with less than two minutes to go. Their goal is to score. Now look at where they're starting from, midfield. And again, they have a kicker who's Kirill Long in Melhoff is 52 yards. He's hit one from 51 already this season. Donovan, good protection, but what a play on defense. Wrapping up Beckham is Andrew Rawl. That was a nice play by the linebacker, Rawl. Now we're talking about the first half, and remember, Wisconsin had the ball with only five minutes left, four minutes left in this half, and went down the field to score a touchdown. But now in the final two minutes, 11 of their last 14 games, they've come away with points, primarily touchdown. You go back and you ask their head coach, where did this come from? And he'll tell you, when he was in college at Iowa, playing for Hayden Fry, he always talked about for Hayden Fry, he talked about starting fast and finishing fast. And there's a point of emphasis. Then he gets here to Wisconsin, works for Barry Alvarez, and here's the same thing. Remember where Barry Alvarez was an assistant? At Iowa with Hayden Fry. Similar philosophies. And Brett Bielema has taken it, taken it to his coaching staff, and they kept tuning it up, and things have worked pretty well for them in that regard. 42 seconds remain. Wisconsin with one timeout left. 
The ball at the Bulldogs 48 yard line and Donovan steps up to throw it. Looking deep and has one open and overthrows him. He had beat the defender. It's another one they left out there. They've talked about that in the first two games. They felt pretty good about how things went against Washington State. But at UNLV they felt like they left a few big plays out on the field. This was another one. As you noted Tom he had him beat. He just lays it in there drops it in the bucket. That's an easy six points. Well, they need to get the ball basically to the 35 yard line. As you look at the overthrow. Swan had about a step and a half on Millhouse. They need to gain almost 15 more yards to give their kicker a chance. But under heavy trouble is Donovan and down he goes. Sacked all the way back into Wisconsin 42. Kendrick Lyles and Andrew Wall combining on the sack and a loss of nine. And while they combined, Roll on the on the on the straight ahead blitz was the first to flush. See how he gets right to Donovan and flushes him into Lyles. It's their third and final timeout. This is a 32nd timeout. Hey, I've been impressed with the offensive coordinators, but I'm really impressed with the way the Citadel has played defense in the first half. Because at certain times, they have totally disrupted what Wisconsin has tried to do. Yes, they have 21 points on the board, and yes, it's a tie game. But you haven't felt that consistency from Wisconsin that I know they're seeking. Well, Wisconsin's going to punt it away. 20 seconds left. The Citadel spends its final timeout of this half, and now they're shuffling guys in a hurry to get on the field. In a sense, the Citadel has beaten Wisconsin at its own game in the last two minutes. They're coming after this play. Hey, why not? Hey, why not? What does the Citadel have to lose today? You, you put it all out there today. They're coming to try and get it. Blocked nicely by Wisconsin. And Roberts just going to let it bounce. And it will bounce out of bounds of the 15-yard line. 12 seconds left to play until halftime. And now you sit out at time and go to the half tied at 21. Now you don't. If you're to sit out, you don't take the opportunity to give a cheap one away to Wisconsin and have them feel a little bit better about themselves. Because right now, you took away something that Wisconsin believes is almost their birthright, scoring in the last two minutes of the half because they put that pressure on them and they turned it all the way around on them. Well, we talked about Kevin Higgins, formerly the quarterbacks and wide receivers coach of the Detroit Lions in the NFL. He was a head coach at Lehigh for seven years. And led them to four Patriot League championships, three consecutive playoff appearances. He's in his third year at the Citadel. And here at halftime in the 100th year of football at the Citadel, this has to be their most impressive first half in 100 years of football on the road against a team like Wisconsin, ranked seventh in the country. And at the intermission, we're tied at 21. They put Florida State off their feet on the road a couple years ago for a half before things fell apart in the second half. Well, we were in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where the mood was much like this at halftime. Let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Coach, your running game is working. You're putting the ball on P.J. Hill's back, but defensively, you've got to make an adjustment. What is that in the second half? Well, they're basically attacking us on the outside and then hitting us up with some influence traps in the middle. Uh, they hadn't done that. we got to be able to defend from the inside out defensively. Uh, made some dumb penalties. We had them backed up down here, and Jonathan Casillas had a late hit. We just can't shoot ourselves in the foot. Offense is doing what they have to do. Thank you very much, thank Coach. You. Carissa, thank you. And Coach Bielema, thank you. That's the end of the first half. The Citadel 21, Wisconsin 21. 10 Network Football is brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. By Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year. Vote now at coachoftheyear.com. And by the all-new Ranger RZR. See it up close at your local Polaris Ranger dealer. Welcome you back to Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. We're tied at 21, the Citadel and the Badgers. Wisconsin will get the football to begin the second half. Marcus Randall L., yes, the younger brother of Antoine, waits alongside David Gilreath. It will be Gilreath from the two. He's already had a couple of big returns today, but dropped at the 18-yard line. What a nice special teams coverage play there by Scott Flanagan, a backup wide receiver. 
Take a look at our Polaris first half statistics and who would have thunk it, Charles Davis? Not too many people coming into it. The running stats have been the key ones because the Citadel has done more in that part of the game than I think anyone anticipated, able to get the ball inside and run against the front of Wisconsin. Let's see what the Badgers have in mind to begin the second half. They start in the I formation. They had great success running the football. P.J. Hill only four yards shy of 100. You can give him 100 for the day and more. Hill has tackled all the way out of the 45-yard line. That'll be a gain of 26 yards for P.J. Hill. I'm anxious to see what Paul Christ is thinking to start the second half, the offensive coordinator for Wisconsin, because right now, he just wants to get the big guy a nice hole, and he gets one. Presley, number 44 on the lead. Number 68, Karimi, the left tackle, sealed his guy, and that created a nice gap for P.J. Hill to hurdle through. I think that Wisconsin in this half probably wants to try and run the Citadel out of all the stunts and movement that they showed in the first half on defense. Hand it off to Hill again, and he spins his way for three yards. It'll bring up second down and seven. See what Isaac Collins, the defense coordinator of, Citadel is, of the Citadel, is doing is he's trying to get, as they say, one more hat than you can block on defense in the run game. So that's Brian Trey put seven or eight guys in there, and they're trying to get people to hit him. Well, let's revisit now our Suzuki motorcycles keys to the game. Well, we said QB or not QB. Duran Lawson has been everything and more that the Citadel has wanted at quarterback. He has, he has been dynamic. And punching the clock, this, the Wisconsin wants to control time of possession. They're down about five minutes in time of possession to the Citadel. Second down, and again, they're going to hand it off. And again, it's P.J. Hill. And again, he is stopped. Maybe a yard beyond the line of scrimmage. Read well by the redshirt freshman from... Augusta, Georgia, Reggie Rice. I think what's going to have to happen because both of these guys are coming here to pull, but back here is where the hit comes from. The backside pursuit, that's number 32, Rice. The linebacker slash defensive back. And they're getting that extra hat into the hole that they're unable to block on the offensive front for Wisconsin. In the first half, Tyler Donovan hit on 6 of 10 for just 68 yards. He was under a lot of pressure in that first half, and now a throwing down. Donovan with good protection, steps up, delivers a strike to Luke Swan down to the 40, and they'll move the chains. First down, Badger. That coverage was good by Tillman Milhouse, number three. But Luke Swan, a very savvy route runner, used his body to shield away uh, Milhouse, number three, from the football. Watch the coverage. He's there. But see how Swan keeps his body between Milhouse and the football? All he can do is tackle him after the pass is completed. Blitz coming, they pick it up, and it nearly intercepted. My, oh my. Maybe a step away from going the other way was Joshua Lawson. See, I think that Isaac Collins, the defensive coordinator, has a nice read going right now with Wisconsin because what he's done is he's kind of gotten in tune with Paul Chris and the pressure from outside of Gabe Karimi. Number 90, Trevar Broughton, brought the pressure on Tyler Donovan, knocked off the timing of the play as well as great coverage. But I think he sensed that Paul Chris wanted to throw the ball on a running down and called his defense accordingly. Second down and 10, opening drive of the second half, and they hand it off to Gilreath. And he is read beautifully on defense. And again, we have called Joshua Lawson's name time after time. The fifth-year senior out of Somerton, South Carolina, a first-team All-Southern Conference performer and playing like it. That's one of the, this is one of the better plays you'll see because what he did was play off the block and then go make the tackle. Joshua Lawson, number 31, that eighth guy in the box, and he drops down from his safety position. He's a terrific player. Got this crowd a little quiet, too, haven't they? Well, after starting this drive in rather impressive fashion, it's now a third down and 13 for the Badgers. They have to get to the 29-yard line for a first down. And it's thrown and caught by Swan. We said the favorite target of Tyler Donovan since becoming the starting quarterback has been Luke Swan. 
And another first down on a pitch and catch between that duo. And look at this, P.J. Hill with the block right there to help with the pass protection to allow Swan to find, excuse me, Tyler Dobbin to find Luke Swan. This time he runs it on Joshua Lawson, whose forte is more run defense than pass defense. But what a connection Donovan and Swan have that started on the scout team when they were freshmen running against the varsity. First down for the Badgers at the 26-yard line on first down. Donovan to throw, steps up, fires, and it is caught by Beckham. And he is tackled at the 8-yard line. Been a quiet day until now for Travis Beckham. That is just his third catch of the afternoon. A gain of 18. And he caught that one between number 31, Joshua Lawson, and number 25, Shaquille Smith. But watch the adjustment that Travis Beckham makes on the football that Joshua Lawson does not. He sees it, and before Lawson is able to get his head around, watch Beckham. And watch Lawson. He's got his back to the quarterback. Now as he turns, he turns a count too late. Beckham has already adjusted to the football. Well, Beckham, the All-American candidate, his third catch. And Wisconsin has to spend a timeout. Wisconsin, it's their first charge timeout. First and goal for the Badgers. Trying to get in front for what would be the fourth time today. Opening possession of the second half for the seventh ranked Wisconsin Badgers tied at 21 against the Citadel. And so far, they've gone right down the field. They play 73 yards for the Badgers. First and goal from the eight-yard line. And they hand it off. P.J. Hill tries to bounce it to the outside and just nowhere to go. Boy, Reggie Rice is playing a nice game for the Citadel Tom. He created the jam up on that play. He got in under Chris Presley, the lead blocker. Watch him coming underneath right there. Boom. See how he gets underneath Presley? That jams up things for P.J. Hill. Nowhere to go. That allowed Raul 54 to get there and everyone else for the rest of the pursuit. Isn't he glad he moved from fullback? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A red shirt freshman. Second down and goal for the Badgers in the 10-yard line. And back to throw it, Donovan to Hill. And he is tripped up shy of the goal line. Just inside the two, it brings up third and goal for the Badgers. See, this is why the Wisconsin coaching staff does not like to have P.J. Hill called the, Ron, the next Ron Dane because of these hands. This is something that Barry Alvarez never really could do with Ron Dane, was use him in the pass game. Wisconsin can do that quite well with P.J. Hill in the pass game. Getting him out into the flat, getting him out isolated on linebacker. He can catch the football, and now he's going to come right at you guys. Third down and goal. Hill looking for his fourth rushing touchdown and is moving along the line of scrimmage. I think that might have been Presley in the backfield. False start, offense number 44. That's a five-yard penalty remains third down. Everything's set. But Presley is, is the fullback, so when he was lined up in the eye, he took a false step forward. Man, that could be a big penalty. Changes your whole play call. They were going to come at them. I think I think Brett Vilmo is thinking two downs yep. here. We're going to go for a touchdown. Now it changes your play call and possibly you're thinking on whether you're going to go for a touchdown or maybe kick a field goal on fourth down. So it is third and goal, and instead of being third and goal from the one, it goes to third and goal from the six. That's Beckman in motion. And rolling left is Donovan. Looking to the end zone, penalty flags all over the field. In and out of the hands of Luke Swan, but again, we have penalty markers in the secondary. I think what Wisconsin's going to ask for is some type of a hold on their receivers running their routes. And when you flood a, flood a zone like that, you run into a lot of traffic, and sometimes you get that, that hold or that bump when the ball's in the air. During the legal forward pass, holding defense number one, half the distance to the goal with an automatic first down. 
Demetrius Jackson, the freshman defensive back. Everything's to the left, but you see right there. And really, they, if, if they're calling it on number one, they got the wrong guy because it looked like Shaquille Smith, number 25. So maybe they had their choice of guys in the secondary. Or unless number one who came into your picture at the last moment who was running with Beckham, maybe right. he was holding him along the sideline. Because they had two of them then, if, if that were the case. Well, it's first down and goal. Automatic first down. And from the three, P.J. Hill. Kyle pushing forward. And is a football loose under there? A couple of the Bulldogs signaling as if it was. Nothing doing there. P.J. Hill has already scored a career-high three rushing touchdowns in a game today. Looking for his fourth. And really, I think that right now the mentality from the Wisconsin sideline is four downs for a touchdown or nothing. They're bringing Mickey Turner, number 36, pulling him, getting the push from the offensive line. But I think that they've run Hill four times, and you're either in the end zone or you're not, if that's what it's going to take. Second and goal from inside the one. That's Turner in motion, leading the way for Hill, and he dances into the end zone for the fourth time today. Just simple, simple push. Everybody go up there and hat up on someone. Anyone wearing a shirt that's not the color of your team, try and get a block on them. Presley leading. The big guys up front have to get some credit for that. 63 is Urbic, 71, Vanden Heuvel, Coleman, 65, Kemp, 75, Karimi, number 68. Joshua Lawson, the fifth-year senior whose name we have called a great deal today, is the injured Bulldog. Hopefully he is all right. Very slow to get up. And needs help to get off the field. They cannot afford to lose no. him. He was the only starter returning in the secondary. And he has played huge here today for the Citadel. Of course, we have already had one significant injury to the best defensive back now on East team. Lawson just now leaving the field. And Ike Guanu of the Badgers injured in the opening minutes. And apparently will not play the rest of the game. He came back for one play on the next series, Tom, and kept, took himself out of the game again. So the point after is good. For the fourth time today, Wisconsin leads by seven. And now Citadel tries to answer yet again. Bucky working up a lather, having to do now 28 push-ups. And Jack Aikiguanu is finished for the day after getting injured in his quad the opening minutes of the game. Our Holiday Inn Express, a very impressive opening drive in the second half, spanning 81 yards, chewing up six minutes and 17 seconds. That's more like it as far as Wisconsin's concerned. I'm anxious to see, excuse me, I'm excited to see what's going to happen defensively for Wisconsin now, what adjustments they may, they may make. This is Torrey Cooper. He's out across the 20. Mercy did he get hammered. Jay Valai, the redshirt freshman, the Texan. A backup strong safety delivered a mighty hit there. And Brett Bielma had a nice little chat with him a couple weeks ago about what more he needed from him in special teams. And boy, has he responded in a big way. Brett Bielema told Carissa Thompson at halftime, we're getting beat from the inside out, down the middle of the field. So what do you look for them to do to change that? I think they, they may end up playing a little more that you know they, they've got to keep the linebacker at home and tell them hey you're not exiting out for pass plays as quickly as you did in the first half. Well they bring a blitz on first down. And Aubrey Pleasant. A big sack on first down. That'll be a loss of nine. You always hear coaches talk about starting fast and start at half. Well they're talking usually about offense. Here it's Aubrey Pleasant finding the gap 
and starts fast on defense for Wisconsin. Something that their defense sorely needed for a from a confidence perspective. Rand Lawson so impressive in the first half. Fakes one way, lofts the ball down the sideline. Did the interception come down with it from Wisconsin? Yes, what a play by Shane Carter. Leaping high into the air, and for the first time today, Duran Lawson is intercepted. In fact, the first time all year he's been intercepted. I think what Wisconsin's going to tell their linebackers in the second half is hope by the Badgers to take this seven point lead. And Donovan to throw it. Short drop. And it's caught and then out of the hands of Garrett Graham, the sophomore from Britain, New Jersey. Bring up third down and 10. Our Liberty Mutual alumni spotlight. No, Barry Alvarez did not go to the University of Wisconsin. But he made this a great college football program again. He took over in 1990, leaving as defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Came here, and so many people told him, don't, don't do even it. think about it. And Lou Holtz asked him, are you sure you can win at Wisconsin? And he said, yes, I can. And boy, has he. Three Big Ten Did championships, he? three Rose Bowls later. The all-time winningest coach in Badger history. Donovan flushed out of the pocket. Has to cut it loose in the end zone. And a flag comes in. Not turning around and finding the ball was Milhouse. And he makes contact with Luke Swan. You know, this, this, this play will not go in the Jackson Pollock, you know, art museum because it was all thrown off right from the beginning. Pass interference, defense, number three. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. With an automatic first down. Now they don't call the face guarding in a college game, Charles. Uh, was there contact here when, before when the ball? Set, yeah, that's going to be the key to it all. But right here is where the play gets fouled up to begin with. Watch that. I mean, with he and PJ Hill, not quite the right timing back there. But Tyler Donovan uses his legs to extend the life of the play. And then downfield, they call it Millhouse for getting into the receiver swan before the ball arrives. There is no face guarding in college football. They're saying he got there before the ball did with Swan. That's, you know, from the Citadel's perspective, saying looked like perfect timing to us. Sure it did. So first and goal for the Badgers. Double tight ends here, Tom. Here comes the motion. And they're going to hand it to P.J. Hill. And he is down to the three-yard line. Hill today with four rushing touchdowns. The last time a Badger ran for five touchdowns in a game was Brian Calhoun, who had five of them at Illinois on October the 29th of 2005. Well, I think Wisconsin is planning on P.J. Hill getting his fifth here. They have brought in Danny Kay, number 64, an extra offensive tackle to come into the lineup now to block. That suggests a big power formation, a jumbo set, so to speak with Bill Rentmeester, Rentmeester number 34, the lead fullback. Second down and goal, and Donovan will hang on to it on the option. And he is tackled inside the two-yard line, down to the one by Rawl. So third down and goal upcoming for the Badgers as we roll down to five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. They come in with a straight speed option here. Fullback lead. There's the lead there from Rentmeester, number 34. Donovan almost gets in, falls a little short. I think I'd call this play here. Go ahead. They're keeping the same jumbo set out there. There's a guy wearing three and nine in red who scored four times before. Big people up front. Big guy out back, but now they're splitting him out wide. Look at this. They've got the fullbacks in the middle. Quarterback sneak. Not sure if he got in. It doesn't look like it. And you really got to wonder about the play call. I mean, you know, come on. I mean, I understand Paul Christ uh, has gotten a lot of uh, notoriety, and rightfully so, as the offensive coordinator here at Wisconsin. But, I mean, you really got to wonder about that call right there. For, for my money, I just line up with that big guy, and even if they know he's coming, I ought to be able to carve a, whole, a, a yard out of that with my offensive line. I mean, you, you, that, that's just me. That's you're outweighing these guys by 70 pounds up front. You've done it four times already. Why not a fifth? And this time, I don't think they get cute. He comes right at you. 
Well, was there early movement? There was by was. Wisconsin. And that changes everything. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 64. At the five yard penalty, it remains fourth down. See, and that's Danny Kay, the extra tackle that they inserted. He would be back here on this side and ended up on, excuse me, I guess they had him on the power side on the right side, and he jumped a little bit early, so Brett Bielma sees the five yard penalty. Field goal time. So, advantage really? The Citadel. Well, now the field goal try will be from 23 yards out for Taylor Melhoff, who has not missed this season. This is his first field goal attempt today. And the kick is up, and it is good. Well, again, you go back to the third down and goal from the two foot line. They can't get in and settle for three. of the Big Ten Conference. So 10 points for the Badgers to break a 21-all tie at halftime. 31-21, and the Citadel will get the ball for the second time in this half. They've only run two plays from scrimmage in this half. Corey Cooper from the one-yard line. And understandably, perhaps a little gun shy as he took quite a hit the last time he fielded the kickoff, and this time tackled by Blake Sorensen. Jay Valai also getting down the field. He was a guy that delivered the blow the last kickoff. He's the guy who doesn't have responsibility for lanes. His responsibility is only to get to the football. And look at how well he does that, helping out with the tackle. By there with number 27, Blake Sorensen, the freshman linebacker. Well, this becomes a critical drive for the Citadel if they hope to stay in it. And Wisconsin helped them by kicking a field goal there. But watch the linebackers for Wisconsin. They're going to play the run a lot tougher in this half. Cody Wilson picks up maybe two. Second down and eight. All right, Big Ten fans. This Saturday, the action continues on the Big Ten Network. All starting with a pregame show. Then Juice Williams in Illinois travel to Bloomington to take on the Hoosiers. Charles, you'll be there. It starts at noon Eastern, 11 Pacific, and of course the post-game show right after the game. Pitch, good block by Jernigan, and a good open field stop made by Aaron Henry, the true freshman from Immokalee, Florida. About an hour and a half north and west of Miami. I mean, out of the Florida Everglades. and Edger and James' hometown. They had everybody coming after him, including the University of Florida, but he felt like he <laughs> wanted to get away from Florida yes. and stretch himself, raised by his grandparents. And just a delightful young man. 4.3 student and accelerated course in, courses in high school. Third down for Lawson. And the throw is too tall for Andre Roberts. He was open in that first down yardage, but it is three and out for the Bulldogs. See, when you're down 10 points, every play becomes that, more, more, that much more important for you on offense. You need to make all the plays to pull off the upset. There was an opportunity lost for the Citadel. That's a play Roberts really should have caught the football. Didn't do it. David Gilry stands at his own 35. Gaspar back to punt. Good snap. That's a return ball, Tom. Good kick, though. All the way back to the 25 for Gilreath. Avoids one tackler, breaks it back up the sideline, and tip goes out of bounds to the 38. Crowd is waiting, of course, for the end of the third quarter. Ah, oh, the student section, who loves it so much. Jump around by the House of Pain at the end of the third quarter. And my understanding is that just came about totally as a fluke. Somebody just popped it on one time at that yep. point of the ball game, and the response was so overwhelming that it became a part of the Wisconsin tradition. And what a great tradition it is. It's fun. Students We're going to show it to you. We'll tape it and bring it back to you when we begin the fourth quarter. This is P.J. Hill. 
Shoved out of bounds all the way down to the 40-yard line. A gain of 22 more yards for P.J. Hill. If this were the 70s, he'd say he had a convoy from these two guys. Watch the blocks by the fullback and the tight end leading P.J. Rittmeister, 34, on the corner. And that allows number 89, Garrett Graham, to go downfield and hold his block for a while to give P.J. Hill the corner. Well, this kid is a low P.J. Hill, a redshirt sophomore from East Elmhurst, New York. Comes the blitz. And Donovan in trouble. And down he goes. Rice, Smith, and company. Running down, help from Lyles as well. They brought, this is in simple terms, as, as our friend Barry Alvarez would say, they brought they brought more than you could block. And those came, those were defensive backs arriving at the quarterback to put him down. Shaquille Smith, number 25, one of them. Haven't seen any draws or screens to try and slow down this pressure from the Citadel yet. Play fake to Beckham, and there is a screen. You just called it, Charles Davis. And Graham, the tight end for big yardage. That's a first down all the way to the 27-yard line. A gain of 25 yards. Paul Christ had had enough of all this pressure, and now he tries to go to the screen game to hopefully put that in the heads of the Citadel and slow them down a little bit. Very creatively called and executed a tight end screen in the middle of the field to Garrett Graham before he's bounced out by Shaquille Smith, number 25. Boy, Charles, for a defensive guy, you're thinking like an offensive coordinator. Well, the way it's gone today, the poor defensive guys is getting all beaten out of us. <laughs> well, they're coming after him again and again. This is P.J. Hill. A nice tackle. Made by Broughton. Yeah, and if he doesn't make that tackle, Tom, I think we're talking for you. You're calling P.J. Hill going to the end zone. For what would be a fifth time in a game. Because that was just tremendous. Trevor Broughton, number 90. Look at what he's got right here. See that? He's all lined up to have people ahead of him. So if he doesn't make that play behind the play, number 90, Broughton, I think P.J. Hill's high-stepping towards, towards six. And Broughton is uh, shaken up. Wondering if the uh, heel after he made the tackle there on Hill came up and got him up under the face mask in the chin or the throat. Nose he's all right. Hurt. Nose hurt. Well, he's going to have to go out for one play. He doesn't really want to go out, but rules say he has to go out. That's Andy Clawson on the left right there. The longtime terrific trainer at the Citadel. And he's one of those guys nationally respected. Now we look at the yards. Second half, minus three yards for the Citadel. Wisconsin rolling it up at this point with 145. A lot more in sync in the second half. Take away the one big sack, and they came back and got it all back and more on the screen pass in the next play to Garrett Graham. P.J. Hill, 22 carries for 156 yards and four touchdowns. His career high, of course, 249 yards against Northwestern last year. Second down and five, and Hill will get it again. And he continues to add to his big yardage numbers. He's up over 165 there. And what a job being done by Garrett Graham, the tight end. Help leading the way along with that big offensive line. See, I think that Paul Chris, this is, this is the best sequence of plays that he's called today, and he's called some good ones. And the reason I say that, Tom, is that he's found a chink in the armor of the Citadel on defense, and he's not afraid to continue to go back to it. You know, a lot of guys say, okay, I've got to show something different now. It's working. They haven't stopped it yet. Keep pounding away. Here comes the same formation. Final there play it is. of the third quarter, and uh, this time they got it. They came up to get it, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. They remember at halftime, we were tied at 21, but 10 unanswered for the Badgers. And we'll be back to Camp Randall Stadium as they're revving up for the jump around when we come back. We are back and we'll give you a look at that jump around in just a moment. 31-21, Wisconsin in front. Second down and 11. The Badgers 
banging on the door to jump out by 16, if not 17, with a point after. Luke Swan out wide here, the favorite target of Tyler Donovan. I'm thinking some type of play action here. Play action it is, and they drop it off to Hill. And he is into the end zone for the fifth time today. B.J. Hill is tied to Wisconsin school record with his fifth touchdown of the game. So you've got Hill here coming out of the out of the backfield to run a route. You have Swan out on the corner. It's a play action. Action to Hill, and then he's the second receiver short. Swan covered as the first receiver downfield. Hill beats the one-on-one -on -one and wins it. Wins that battle and gets to the end zone. Is that five? You said Tom? Five? Five big ones? And if they hand the ball off to him from third down and a foot, it'd be six. Agreed. What a day for Hill, 24 carries, 165 yards, four rushing touchdowns. Our Jack Link's wild fan of the game. This is a jump around, Charles. Tradition here at Wisconsin, the end of the third quarter, the band even comes out of the stands down on the field to participate, and the crowd can't wait. That thing is That's awesome. great. That is awesome. I tell you what, if you love college sports and college football, that's, that's one of the best things you're going no, to see. No. And everywhere you go, there's a certain tradition that's associated with the game that the students have a big hand in. That's hard to beat. Yeah, it is. I mean, that, that's, that's almost sent us down there to go jump around. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> they, they don't want to see that, though. The students would be like, be fun. Fun. like well, we're going to go down there. We're going week. down, right? The students would be like, you two got to leave. <laughs> you got to get Carissa down there. Hey, she, hey if, if she She's goes not in, much older than they are. She can jump around with the students. You and I might pull something. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> Now bringing it out of the end zone and spinning his way out to the 14-yard line is Cody Wilson. He got more out of that than he should have. Should have just stayed in. <laughs> Two touchdowns and a field goal for Wisconsin here in the second half. Seven plays, 62 yards. Hill the touchdown reception. His fifth touchdown overall today. Couple good defensive series now for Wisconsin. Back to back. Let's see if they can string together another one. Linebackers are going to play the run first before they back out and go cover passes. Now Lawson didn't throw it. Had an eye on Jernigan. It just does get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's take a timeout. Send it back to Chicago to Dave Revson. Thank you, Tom. Looks like the Badgers have things in hand, as does Illinois. Richard Mendenhall emerging from the pile there and taking it into the end zone. Illinois on top 41 to 10 over Syracuse. Charles, what in the world has happened to that Syracuse program? It's a great question. Remember, they, they dumped Paul Pasqualoni thinking they needed a change. And right now, his last record was six and six with a real good in Syracuse. Lawson on first down. Overthrows his intended receiver, the running back, Tory Cooper. Nick Hayden putting heavy pressure on Lawson, who's had a very quiet second half, much like the entire Citadel team. He had three touchdowns, no interceptions, hit on 13 of 16 to start the game. And now he's all for his last three with a pick. And they desperately need a nice play here because Wisconsin loading up in the secondary wants to get off the field again on third down. They set up the screen, and that did not fool Matt Shaughnessy one bit. Another three and out, so it's two plays and interception. And now a pair of three and outs for the Wisconsin defense. Shaughnessy right there, reads the screen the whole way and snuffs it immediately. 
No play there for Duran Lawson. Ball has to go right back to Wisconsin. Whatever they did at the half, it's sure working for Wisconsin. <laughs> I have a feeling it wasn't a lot of strategy. It's a lot more motivation. Gil Reef on a line drive kick from his own 48. Breaking it to the outside. And the freshman tries to cut it back to the inside. That looks like a face mask. Will go against Demetrius Jackson, number one. So they'll tack on yardage to this return. Man, this Gilreath is going to be a player. Ooh. He is going to be a player at Wisconsin. Ooh. A true freshman out of New Hope, Minnesota. And those are the kind of guys that the University of Minnesota Good needs to, to keep. Turn. Face mask on the receiving team. Correction, face mask on the kicking team. Number five. Five. Well, tell, <laughs> Steve, everybody's asking, is it a five or a 15? I think Steve Payman's saying it's a five-yard penalty. As you see, Gilreath go to the corner. Demetrius Jackson, number one, right there. It really looks like he got more shoulder pad than he did face mask. Nonetheless, a five-yard penalty against him. They got him on the run right now, Tom oh, Wisconsin yeah. does it against the Citadel. And this is a drive here where you can, in a sense, break the spirit of the Citadel if they push it in. Out of the eye formation, Presley leading P.J. Hill. And he'll just plow ahead off to the left side, a gain of four for P.J. Hill. They are the Big Ten's greatest games. Every week, relive the moments that define the conference's rich history. The Big Ten's greatest games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, 5 Central, on the Big Ten Network. B.J. Hill going to get a breather. And we thought he would if they opened up any kind of daylight in this game today. And now with a 17-point lead and 12 and a half to go. Zach Brown, the true freshman from Florida, has checked in for Hill, and they're going to throw it on second down. Donovan to the end zone. Touchdown, Travis Beckham. Double move out of Travis Beckham down in the secondary. And while he is a tight end, he moves more like a wide receiver. And he was able to beat the strong safety to White House. One on one, extra move, Donovan connects, touchdown. Point after is good. And Bucky's going to be built like Hercules. 45 21 Badgers. You buy U.S. Bank, home of the five star service guarantee by Yield Guard BT Triple, the Yield Protection System. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Oh, what a great place to come visit Madison, Wisconsin. One of our favorites. Oh, this is this place is terrific. I love coming here. And right now, you know what Brett Bielema would love? To see his defense continue to play at the high level. Now, now, now they have this big lead. He doesn't want to see any type of a letdown. Well, here in the third quarter, 10 first downs for Wisconsin, none for the Citadel after we were tied at 21 all at halftime. And great special teams coverage by the Badgers as well. Total yards in the second half, 154 for Wisconsin. Negative three yards, call it four yards for the Citadel. That's the backup punter, Paul Standring, getting, this, getting the tackle on kickoff coverage. No, you're tough when you got your punters running down on coverage. They're going to pitch it to Torrey Cooper. And he's out to the 20-yard line. Well, it's 30 minutes of highlights, analysis, and features dedicated to the world of Big Ten women's athletics. The Big Ten Women's Show, Monday nights at 7.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. They had a rousing round of applause here for the 
Wisconsin women's basketball team they introduced here at halftime. Finalists last year in the WNIT. I think they won 23 games last season. That program's on the rise. Ohio State of power in women's college basketball. Cooper again on the carry out to the 23 yard line third down upcoming and let's check in once again with Carissa Thompson. We'll do that in just a minute. We're going to talk about athletics here at uh, Wisconsin. I mean well you talk about all of a sudden an entire university's athletic program going from one level up three four five levels in the last number of years. Hey wow. Well, hey, Wisconsin says you want to play us in sports pick a sport. We'll play it. How about, how about winning uh, ice hockey, men's and women's, in the same year? Well, the track, and the track men's championship. indoors. Powerhouse now in men's basketball. Lawson a throw, completes a pass, and that will be their first first down here of the second half on the completion of Roberts. Let's now check back in with Carissa Thompson. You guys, I just got out of the jump around. It was really weird. They said, you know, we'll let you in if you let Tom and Charles come in with you. So heads up for next time that we're here. All right, so you guys alluded to it earlier, Charles, you did with Tyler Donovan and Luke Swan being on the scout team in 2003. These guys hang out all the time together. They play golf all summer long. They'd like to point out that they shoot in the low 80s. Whoever won had to buy ice cream for the other person. They even took a trip to Denver this past offseason together. Spend a lot of time on and off the field, and that's why the chemistry works. Great stuff, Carissa. Yeah, Carissa. Boy, the numbers do not lie. There's a completion again to Roberts. I mean, you know, coming into the game today, in the four games as a starter for Donovan, he had thrown 19 completions to Luke Swan. Let's send it to Chicago and check in with Dave. Thanks, Tom. Want to get you updated on the game between Akron and Indiana. This one getting closer. Carlton Jackson to Jabari Arthur back in the end zone. 27-24 game, but the Hoosiers on the move. Well, we saw the Akron Zips last week give the Buckeyes all they wanted for the first half. It was a 3-2 at the half. Mm -hmm. Lawson in trouble. And he just does get back to the line of scrimmage. Wrapped up by Brandon Kelly, number 56, a fifth-year senior out of Bedford, Ohio. That was the sure that they've been looking for to get to the quarterback when it's not a three-step drop. That time they were able to combine with the secondary, who had nice coverage, so the line could get to Duran Lawson. And by the way, didn't Carissa look pretty put together for someone who just did the jump? She around? did. Looks She's like amazing. a million bucks. Well, that's what you I mean when you're young. I mean, you and I forget it. Uh, it'd take us weeks to recover. <laughs> Far side and complete. I mean, Carissa, you know, she just bounces right back. She didn't get in last night because of uh, plane troubles. Didn't get to bed here in Madison until about 3.30 uh, in the morning. And yet she was up and at him at 6 a.m. today, ready to roll here first at Camp one, First one to the stadium. You and I staggered out there. You, did, you and I would have looked all beaten up. <laughs> what, what do you mean we don't already? <laughs> well, we'd have really looked beat up. The one thing I am noticing for Wisconsin now, that defensive front is starting to exert its will getting back to Duran Lawson. Well, Lawson saw the middle linebacker commit himself on the blitz, and he took the other lane off to the left side and is out to midfield. A gain of almost six. But Ben Strickland, watch him right here. He recognizes, watch, he, he's going to see Duran Lawson, the quarterback draw. He doesn't really retreat and see him come up in a nice open field one-on-one -on -one tackle. If he had kept all of his attention on the receiver, Duran Lawson would have a place to run. Well, the Bulldogs drive stalls at midfield. We're down to 9, 12 and counting to play here in Madison. And that one is punted and then bounces out of bounds. Nicely done. At the 11 yard line. PJ Hill has some more football left in him. 168 yards rushing today. Final 9.01 to play from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. We were tied at 21 at halftime. No fooling around here in the second half for the Wisconsin Badgers. And now with a 45-21 lead. 
Alan Everidge, the transfer from Kansas State, who sat out all of last year. He started six games, played in nine as a freshman for K-State back in 2005, and went into the spring and the fall with a chance to compete for the starting quarterback job. Tyler Donovan won it. Lance Smith, the sophomore out of Warren, Ohio, carries the football and our Cargill passing combination. We talked about this combination of Luke Swan, the wide receiver, and his buddy Tyler Donovan, the Carissa, talked about their relationship a little while ago. And obviously, Donovan likes throwing that ball to Swan. He knows he's going to be there. There's a dependability to Luke Swan that gives a quarterback comfort. And as Carissa detailed, they've expanded upon the relationship that began when they were both running scout team back in 2003 with every day with an everyday association. And breaking the big one is Lance Smith. A couple of men to beat. Cuts it back the other way and dragged down all the way to the 29 yard line. Lance Smith, who had some off the field issues, an issue really, one event that uh, has prevented him from making any of the road trips this year for the Badgers. We've seen this play all day long. It's the counter. And he ends up getting a nice block from number 74, John Moffitt, now in the game at guard that helps spring him. A lot of other assistance from his offensive line. There's Randall L downfield. Marcus Randall L trying to help out with a block, too. 56 yards on a carry for Smith. Now looking for more as he breaks it to the outside, to the 20. And wrestled down to the 17-yard line. I mean, this is one talented back, Lance Smith. But again, he can only play in the home games for this year. He cannot go on the road. So for him, he hates the idea of a multiple game road trip as he fakes off 12 yards on that play. And now he'll come out of the game, and then Zach Brown will go in as he gets a quick blow. Well, they only have back-to-back -back road games once this entire year. Well, to, to his, the first to his two are at delight. home in the conference <laughs> against Iowa and Michigan State. Then they go to Illinois and a big one October the 13th at Penn State. So they have quite a stretch coming up with Big Ten games. Now, their two biggest games of the year is that ball is fumbled and covered up by the Bulldog. Their two biggest road games of the year will be at Penn State and at Ohio State in November. Dwight House stripped it. He covered it up, I beg your pardon. Wisconsin student section was loving Sweet Caroline by Mary Barry Manilow recently, but I got to come up with a song for P.J. Hill on the heels of a five touchdown performance today. And he's done it a variety of ways, breaking into the open field, powering through the line on a few occasions, and also showing off his hands, catching the football out of the backfield. P.J., I am not Ron Dane Hill. And his mama tried to fatten him back up over the summer. He came yep. home and she said, you're a little, little thin in the skin, son. Let me let me cook you some food. And he's like, Mom, I'm getting my body right for the year. Oh, yeah. Dropped 20 pounds on the slimmer, improved version of P.J. Hill. Going down the full wayside. Over to spin out of the way is Lawson. And now a wide open receiver is caught over on the far sideline by Torrey Cooper. And he is tackled all the way at the 28-yard line. So after DeAndre Levy missed the sack chance on Lawson, he makes some pay. You know what's amazing about this play is that this is what it was designed to do in the first place. And, De and Dewan Lawson kept the play alive with his legs and then threw back across his body on the run across field and connected with his running back. I am so impressed with the quarterback from the Citadel. We've seen some good ones in this, in this short season already, Tom. Looking for the touchdown, and the contact made with Roberts and Henry, no flag. Well, you, know, you and I have seen, uh, obviously, Appalachian State and their upset win over Michigan. And Appalachian State, the uh, two-time defending one double-A, as it was formerly known, national champions. Our Cooper tires, big stop of the game. That first sack on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, Aubrey Pleasant, number eight. It really set the tone for the second half defensively for Wisconsin, who needed a confidence boost 
after getting torched for 21 points in the first half. Cooper plows ahead down to the 25. We were talking to Coach Higgins the other day, and you know, after we got through the talk about your chances against Wisconsin, we asked him, you know, compare your team talent-wise to Appalachian State. You play in the Southern Conference, and he said, you know what, we're not even there with those guys yet. Right. But I think it's pretty safe to say, Charles, they got their first winning record in the conference last year in better than a decade. They've been over 14, been 14 seasons. Yep, and you, you got to believe watching them and the way they've been able to play here today, there are real good things in store for the Bulldogs. They're going to have a say in who wins the Southern Conference because they're really not there yet with Appalachian. They're not there yet with Furman, Wofford perhaps, but they're going to have a say in who wins that thing. And let's face it, Tom, we've talked about this off air. In one double A or football championship subdivision, I'm glad you keep remembering the that. The Southern Conference is the SEC in a sense, or the Big Ten, however you want to put it, because that is the conference that potentially can put out four to five teams in the playoffs each and every year. Yep. I mean, if you win the Southern Conference there, you will be a contender nationally, no question about it. it will be a 38-yard field goal try for Mike Adams. His long on the year is 35. And this one is good. And the well, after missing a couple of field goal attempts last week, Adams has to feel better. A little confidence boost for him. And the people at Dr. Phillips High School back in Orlando, Florida, rejoice. Well, Tom, it looks like Indiana might be out of the woods against Akron. Kellen Lewis on the keeper here. The Hoosiers have the ball as well at the 30-yard line of Akron right now on top by 10. All right, David, thank you very much. I know uh, David Company will keep everybody posted in the postgame show coming up right after this one is over. 45 24 as the Citadel gets his first points of this second half after scoring 21 in the opening half. You nervous stomachs around the Big Ten today. Been a lot of close ball games that the teams have been involved with. I mean, I'm getting Illinois next week against Indiana. Yep. Indiana. Has a chance to get to will still has a chance to still be undefeated in Illinois coming in on a nice roll with the wins in the last couple of weeks and just pounding Syracuse today. And of course uh, later today uh, the two traditional heavyweights if you will of the Big Ten will be in action. In fact coming up in just a little while you'll have Michigan 0 and 2 against 0 and 2 Notre Dame a game in Ann Arbor and the uh, 10th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes a 2 and 0 against a 2 and 0 Washington team under Tyrone Willingham. Gil Reap will take a knee. Your thoughts, Charles, on those games coming up later today involving the Big Ten? I'll start with Michigan and Notre Dame. I think that Michigan might be better served to play that one on the road. Things have been so tough at home. So that's very difficult for them as we look at Wisconsin, who just owns the home field. So since I talked about home field, that makes it tough for Michigan. But they might rather be on the road. But the Ohio State Washington game to me is the more intriguing game because we're seeing a rejuvenated Huskies team that many thought would still be down. Could this be the year that the bite goes back into the Huskies already? They've knocked out Boise State, who we just saw on that list. Lance Smith ripped off a 56 yard run a moment ago, but then fumbled the ball shortly thereafter, picks up a gain of two. Clock rolling now under five minutes. Well, you and I saw the Buckeyes last week, and on offense, they did not look sharp until the second half. Right. But their defense looks real good. In fact, after two weeks, the number one ranked defense in the country. And what we liked about them was while they're young, they made every play at full speed, didn't they? I mean, if there was a yeah, mistake, they, really they were flying around the field. Everybody said, well, it's Akron. Well, is Akron not giving a battle again today? Did they not play for the MAC championship just a couple of seasons ago? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good program that J.D. Brookhart put together. And they made them punt 14 times in that ball game. I like the defense of the Buckeyes. Offensive line has to get it together a little bit. I mean, they had a lot of reasons why they were coming together. We saw it again. They've got to get some consistency up front and move some people to give Beanie Wells an opportunity because he is a feature back that you can ride. So the Badgers at number seven in the country. We mentioned they will begin Big Ten play next weekend. Their first two conference games are going to be at home. 
Third down throw for Everidge, his first throw today, and it's a good one. Boy, what a nice throw that was to Marcus Randallel, the younger brother of Antoine Randallel, of course, a star quarterback at Indiana, now a wide receiver, formerly of the Steelers, now the Redskins. Beautiful throw because he zips it out there on a line, and Randallel uses his body to protect the football from the defender. Didn't allow the defender to play through him to the ball, and they're trying to get Marcus Randallel going again. Back from a torn ACL in his left knee last year. Had to rehab and has made his way back. He's trying to become a factor as a wide receiver. Uh, let's get back to charge Let's get back to Wisconsin here for a minute. We mentioned their first two games in conference play will be here at Camp Randall against Iowa and then against Michigan State, and then back-to-back -back road games against Illinois, Penn State, Northern Iowa here, or Northern Illinois here yes. thereafter. Now, what you look at as we speak right now, Iowa is gonna play Iowa State today. They have a chance to be undefeated coming here to Camp Randall. Michigan State's winning today at Pitt against Pitt. Again, undefeated team potentially could be coming in here. They will gear up because Wisconsin is now kind of the feature team with Ohio State that everyone will be shooting for. Those are going to be two terrific football games coming up here. And then, you know, remember, Iowa does not play Michigan or Ohio State this year. So people talk about them being potentially the sleeper. And as you mentioned down the road, at Penn State on October 13, that's going to be something. Then again, on the road at Ohio State on November 3. This Wisconsin team wants to accomplish their goals. They may have to do a little bit the hard way on the road against two really good football teams. Ball start offense number five. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And you know something, Tom? Coaching point time. Right now, Brett Bielema is writing down on his card on the side. We are committing way too many errors when we don't need to. That was back there, Lance Smith, the tailback. We're getting too sloppy with a big lead. And he wanted to see them play more of a clean game this week. And that part of the mission has not been accomplished. Well, Smith called for the false start. And I said that he was the one that fumbled on the last drive. It was actually Zach Brown who fumbled on the last drive. And Smith on the carry here, run out of bounds by Ryan Jones. And the guy we're not seeing is John Clay, the heralded recruit. Which a tailback. leads you to believe that they are going to redshirt. I him. think they're looking that looking that direction. The emergence of Zach Brown has really helped in that cause because, as you already talked about, Lance Smith can't play road games. So if Zach Brown didn't emerge and become that guy, maybe Clay John Clay gets that opportunity, even though he started a little bit later with some was it NCAA clearinghouse issues without mm -hmm. getting ready to go. And now they can afford to kind of back down a little bit on force feeding him and let Zach Brown play those snaps. And for those who don't know, John Clay, the most highly recruited player in Wisconsin State history, really in quite some time as far as a uh, player in any position is concerned. And, and Wisconsin able, really in a neck-and-neck -neck race with Ohio State, able to keep Clay in state. And uh, to have him a red shirt this year after, you know, d the delay in getting into the fall camp would probably be a real good thing for this Badger program. And I'm sure Mr. Clay would feel the same way. It's not going to help. It's not going to hurt him one bit to realize he's not having to get ready for games in the same sense every weekend. He just has to get better in practice and can focus on school in a big way. Well, play action there, and that did not fool. Number 96, DeWitt Jones. You know, as great as P.J. Hill has been, and he has been great since coming to Wisconsin, Yes. how good was Ron Dane? <laughs> well, just look at this. I mean, it, it, we're talking about a first 15-game comparison, 2,409 yards to 1,800, God. just by basic Dang. comparison. He's got him in touchdowns, 24 to 17, and in touches, less rushes for Ron Dane. Man. Hey, hey, the, the truth of the matter, when, when the great Dane hit, I, when he hit the field at Wisconsin, we all took notice across the country. Because oh, yeah. our first thing was, no one that big should be allowed to carry a football. There's got to be a rule somewhere, right? I mean, it looked like, right, Fat Albert, when he used to play Buck Buck on the Cosby <laughs> Show, right? And just this pile of people, and that big guy kept moving the pile. Boy, was he something here. And Barry Alvarez said, and the big boy doesn't get lathered up till the fourth quarter. <laughs> Let's well, he keep, tells that story about the Rose Bowl oh. where they complete.
completely yeah. shut down Dane in the first half, and that's when uh, Barry had just had, uh, what, his knee he replaced? Knees, yes, right. He'd had and he surgery. went down and uh, broke, broke uh, crutches, <laughs> giving the halftime speech, and, and the great Dane went off thereafter. <laughs> yeah, the offensive playbook was pretty simple in the second half. Give it to him again, just like John McKay used to say. Coach, we're worried about him carrying the ball so much. Ball's not that heavy. <laughs> Give it to him again. That was unbelievable. See, now we're at the point where the Wisconsin defense has to think about pride because the Citadel is going to come and play this thing all the way out. They're not substituting people. Lawson's coming back on the field at quarterback. He wants to put more points on the board to make this thing look a little more respectable and to get ready to take them back to Southern Conference play. What's the Wisconsin defense going to do? Are they going to relax or are they going to play hard? Comer St. Jean looks like he wants to play hard with a big hit on the pass that was incomplete to Joshua Haney. By the way, if you're wondering about that Rose Bowl, that was 1999 against UCLA when Dane rushed for 246 yards in the Rose Bowl. He doesn't even get warmed up till the second half. <laughs> Throw from Lawson across the middle to Tim Higgins. Clock continuing to run down to 152. We welcome those of you watching Penn State and Buffalo. The Nittany Lions ranked 12th in the country going into play today. Getting a big win against Buffalo. And here in Madison, the Citadel came into Camp Randall, and at halftime, it was a 21-21 game. And much like when you and I were in the big house, the opening weekend when Appalachian State went to Michigan, a lot of long faces here in Madison. But in the second half, it has been total domination for the Badgers. The throw to... Tamar Jernigan. The story again this week for the Badgers. Their star sophomore running back, P.J. Hill. 25 carries, 168 yards, four rushing touchdowns, and he has five total touchdowns in the game, which ties a Wisconsin Badgers school record. And set by the tailback that immediately preceded P.J. Hill, one Brian Calhoun was the last guy to have five touchdowns here prior to P.J. And he learned something else from Brian Calhoun, you know. He learned how to negotiate. Brian Calhoun used to negotiate all the time with Paul Chris, the offense coordinator, about number of carries he'd get per game. And usually Paul would give him a number in the first half and then say, okay, I'll give you that number. Let's see how that goes, then we'll go from there. So if you did well <laughs> in the first half, you'd get plenty more carries in the second. Lawson throws. Boy, that's a nice touch on that throw. Threading the needle and a catch made by Jernigan. Then he steps out of bounds at the 20, a gain of seven and a first down. What did we keep hearing, Tom, when we talked to people about, about Duran Lawson? They'd always talk about how savvy he was, how experienced he was, what a great leader he was, how he used his legs well. Almost always they would end up saying, and his accuracy continues to improve, that he keeps working on it. Well, if they had that much of a question on it, he obviously has worked on it because today I think he's been very accurate. He's gone through a lot in his career at the Citadel. In 2004, he came on to be the starter the final six games of the year. Then in 2005, the first four games of the season, he was their starter. Then he tore his ACL. Came all the way back from that last year. Was second team all Southern Conference, second in the conference in passing, third overall in total offense. He has done a an outstanding job today for the Citadel playing in Madison. Now, I've, I've liked his poise. I've liked his savvy. His stepfather is an was an Army drill sergeant, and he's also decided to make military his life yep. after he leaves the Citadel. Well, he guns that one in there, and not sure if it was batted down or whether Roberts just dropped it. Like he was sandwiched pretty well. Is that Comer St. Jean number 15? And Who's that in the middle there with him? To back up linebacker Casey Hogan, number 12, who has come in for the first time today.
Good throw, good catch out of bounds at the nine yard line. That's freshman Alex Carr. Freshman out of Tampa, Florida. Running a nice route, a beautiful throw by Duran Lawson, but they're doing exactly what we said when they came out for this last drive. They wanted to put more points on the board. They wanted to feel good about themselves heading back to Charleston, South Carolina. Throw to the corner of the end zone, and that'll be a flag thrown against Kim Royston, the sophomore in coverage out of Minneapolis. So that'll move it half the distance to the goal line, right, and first and goal for the Citadel. Pass on the defense number 21. By rule, the ball's placed at the two yard well, line. The two down with an there. automatic first down. You know what the coach for the Wisconsin are looking at? There's the flag going against Royce. You know what the coach from Wisconsin are looking for? What are you going to do at this point, defense? I mean, you look it up at the clock. Are you just worried about going in, taking your pads off, and enjoying the day? Or are you going to try and stop someone? They want to see how they compete. Now the ball's at the five. Steve Payman had said by rule it was at the two. The ball's actually placed at the five yard line. And Lawson just did get tripped up, or he had nothing but daylight on his way to the end zone. And it looks like the Citadel will call a timeout. They want to get into the end zone, as you said, Charles, one more time. And really, after all, isn't that what the Citadel is all about, what we're seeing here at the end? I'm talking about the entire university. Exactly. I mean, that's what it's about. You're going to compete till, till, till this whole thing is done. And they start conference play, I believe, next week, correct? That Chattanooga. Then they have Wofford and Furman at home. So, you know, they want to go ahead and get started with their one double a schedule on the uptick because they think they're going to be pretty good remember prior to today the last team to beat the citadel in the last two seasons because they had won six of their last seven has only been appalachian state as we look at the numbers of duran lawson here 253 yards three touchdowns the one interception occurred at the beginning of the second half when wisconsin really was motivated on defense but that's a nice day by the senior quarterback for the citadel Well, let's find out if uh, this Wisconsin defense can stand tall indeed. Substitution infraction. The defense had 12 men on the field mm. prior to the snap. Half the distance to the goal remains second down. That's not good. So we've had both teams now with 12 guys on the field on defense. Roberts in motion and he was defended in the end zone by Aaron Henry. You know, it is interesting to note, and, and Charles, I know you're well this, uh, but, but some may not be out there about the Citadel. It's actually a state college. Yes. A state supported comprehensive military co college with the mission of, uh, you know, educating principal leaders through its Corps of Cadets. It is the largest such college if you will that is outside of the services academies those would be army navy air force these are pride plays time oh, man. third and one all pride did he not get sure, the end zone sure he got in they're signaling the players are but i've not seen that from the officials i don't think he got in i thought there was a fumble on the play and there was and wisconsin got the ball apparently Timeout, the Citadel, that's their third and final timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. Well, I saw them pointing towards the other way, so I thought they were awarding the ball to yeah. Wisconsin. I guess they were just uh, signaling the timeout. Yes. I misinterpreted the signal. You and me both. Well, okay. Kevin Higgins. You and I got to take a course in signal again. But now it brings up the fourth down. Okay, big call for Kevin Higgins to try and get another touchdown. But I think an equally big call for the Wisconsin defense because they sure would like to end this on an up note as opposed to saying, well, we won, but it just didn't quite feel right as they go to the end zone, go to the locker room. And some first-team guys have come back onto the field for Wisconsin. It looks like their first-team defense for the most part 
back on the field for this final fourth down. Uh, kind of a uh, mixture. Yeah. I think the ball's got to be in Duran Lawson's hands, some type of option or something. Fourth and goal, the final seconds of the game. And Lawson throws to the end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown. Taylor Cornett with the touchdown reception. His first today and his first this season. Cornette right here blocks and comes out. Boom, beautiful. And it, you know, and it's interesting, everybody at home, you know, did they really need to do that? Yes, we played to the end. I talked about being pro, being pride, a pride play down the stretch. Citadel showed their pride and got in. It's the difference between going home and saying, you know what, we got beat by two touchdowns. We hung in there with a top seven team in the country, as opposed to saying, you know what, it, we went in there and got beat by 21. You There's know, a big difference. It's a huge difference. Huge difference for them. Well, again, we remind you, looking ahead to next Saturday, beginning at noon Eastern, 11 Central, after the pregame show, it'll be Illinois against Indiana from Bloomington. A good start for both teams this season. You know, Illinois was pounding Syracuse today. Indiana, they were up in their ball game too, weren't they? Oh, yeah. I haven't gotten the final on that. That was a yet. tighter one, though, against tighter, Akron. Against Akron, because at one point they were up big, and the next thing I know, we were tied with, they were tied with Akron, which didn't surprise us because we saw Akron last week. We saw this. They got a pretty good looking team. They do. Although uh, Ohio University is uh, the favorite in that Eastern, Eastern Division, Division half of the Mid American Conference. But that has bounced around a lot in recent years. Yep. You notice that people have been a champs. You know, Kent State's going to have a say in this thing. Well, they came out of the gate, beat Iowa State at Iowa State earlier this year. Barry Alvarez, so proud of the job his longtime close friend Frank Solich has done since getting its second chance after being let go at Nebraska. And he has really put to Ohio University on the football map. He's made them a strong team. They went to the MAC championship game last year and expected to go back again this year. Nice job. Is that Culver St. Jean up front? Sure is. Great hands. Remember, he was a high school quarterback. Gets a chance to flash those hands again now as a linebacker. Man. Well, this ought to do it. Final play of the game. Everidge will take a knee. So the Wisconsin Badgers rank seventh in the country. They clearly struggled against their third straight spread offense opponent. 21-21 at halftime. And, man, Kevin Higgins on his way back to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Yes, a loss. But, uh, yes, he has to feel good about the way things went today. Meanwhile, for P.J. Hill and company, he runs for 168 yards. And, you know, he feels real good as the Badgers will open conference play next week against Iowa. Yeah, he, he, he's, he is rolling as well as a back can be rolling. Remember, he remade his body in the offseason, so now he's been paying dividends with the whole thing. He looks good. Well, let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Coach, you got to like the performance of your defense in the second half. I know you'd like that last touchdown back, but all in all, what do you take away from the last two quarters that you can help apply to next week's game versus Iowa? Well, the, the first three games, we played well in the second half defensively, but we can't do what we did in the first half, obviously. Uh, we got to secure the perimeters and make tackles. Can't shoot ourselves in the foot, but I like the passion they came out with in the second half, and we'll take this, and now we have an opportunity to start the Big Ten season here at home. You really should uh, tell P.J. Hill to maybe think about scoring a touchdown or two, <laughs> or five. Well, he's a, he's a guy that, you know, loves the workload and I think today he demonstrated again he's ready for the challenge and we get our things straightened out defensively I think pump, uh, our special teams is playing up to task and we'll see what happens from here your team now 10 and 0 when he rushes for over 100 yards thanks very much coach good thank luck you. next week thanks, Carissa coach. thank you very much coach Bielema thank you very much Tyler Donovan now 5 and 0 as a starter 
when he replaced John Stucco last year for a couple of games and beat now the first three of this year. Beat Iowa at Iowa in his first start. And that's a huge rivalry game. Came back, beat Buffalo. Not very good team. Did, did what he had to do and that played well. Stocko takes over in the bowl game. Now he comes back, has to win the job. Yep. And he had to win the job against Allen Everidge, the, the, the touted transfer from Kansas State. 